During the Open Center's 26 years, we have long been a friend of Sufism and its mystical path of love within Islam. We have created many programs on the great Sufi poets like Rumi and Hafez, and conferences on Ibn Arabi, the Andalusian Sufi, held in such high esteem for centuries. Consequently, and in keeping with our vision of perceiving the world holistically instead of divisively, it is most fitting that tonight the Open Center presents these awards for wisdom, tolerance, and an open heart in facing multitude of challenges so nobly and courageously to Imam Faisal Ralph and Daisy Khan. all of you. It is customary for us as Muslims to begin by opening with the name of God, the Creator, the One, the Name and the Unnamed, the Creator of the heavens and the earth and all that is between them, the Creator of humanity, the Creator of time and space, who granted us consciousness, hearing and seeing. I would like to thank you, Al, for your wonderful remarks, and I'm still waiting for as many series like the one you did with Joseph Campbell. The Open Center, as, as Al said, uh, indeed, the, the vision that we had for the, the Cordoba House was in fact to be something like a, uh, a, a, a we might say, an Open Center. Um, the, the story of it begins with my, with my study of, of religion in America and how religion in America evolved, and how America became a very important uh, a place for the evolution of, of forms and understanding of Christianity and Judaism. And, and in my study of, of the evolution of religious identities, where religions evolve from one country to another, and how they take on uh, a different, a different uh, coloration in a given context, uh, the role of the, of the YMCA, which was started 130 years ago, to bridge between the different Christian religions that existed in America, which at that time were all uh, Protestant. And they did it by, by developing the concept of the YMCA and the YWCA, because at that time, genders were still segregated. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm recovering from the flu. Um, and, and how by bringing youth together to play together and to bond together, uh, they would be able to bridge and create bonds that would overcome the, the divisiveness that, that uh, or divisive dynamics that exists between different faith communities. And this was also done by the Jewish community of the Nana Second Street Y, the Jewish community centers, which has taken the concept uh, of this and, and done programming that, uh, that was designed to build relationships between communities. And in fact, in my book, I, I write about the work, the very important work of, a, of an Indian sociologist, Ashutosh Varshni, who studied uh, Hindu-Muslim violence in India and noticed that it occurred in, only in, in urban uh, areas, never in suburban or in the villages. And it occurred in some cities and not in other cities, all the stimulus for violence was there. And the reason he found was because of certain relationships which people had across the faith communities, by visiting with each other, by, by being uh, uh, investors in the same business, by being together in part of a political party, and therefore the importance of creating an environment where people across the faith communities will actually develop and build those kinds of bonds are an important part of attenuating, if not eliminating, conflict between our communities. I always like to use football analogies, so we have to use in, in, in my strategic approach of how to, to develop ways to, to, um, to bridge U.S.-Muslim relations and to enhance uh, relations between Muslims and the other faith communities but to think of both, of both things that we need to do proactively and things that we need to do defensively against the, the elements that are 
uh, that are growing uh, misunderstanding or fuel misunderstanding. And in terms of the, the, uh, the, the activities, the types of activities that really draw and advance to an understanding around a common definition of who we are as human beings and what it means to be human in the very highest and best sense of the term, I cannot think of the activities of any entity that, that is any better than the open center in terms of presenting the types of understanding and dealing with the issues of, uh, of what it means to be human. And as Ralph mentioned earlier, uh, the, 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 the series on the art of dying. And in Sufism, we talk about learning to die before you die. As an important part of, your, of, your, of our spiritual development. And that for the art of dying, and the, uh, as, a, as a tool to the art of living, is what I think the Open Center points to uh, in myriad ways. I, uh, I, I say this not only to, to, to point out the, the third P of profitability that uh, Woody was talking about, that all of us are here encouraged to, uh, to, to, to participate in, but to talk about the very process that, and, and purpose for, for what P uh, as not only family members of the Open Center are about, but also what these human beings are about. Every human being, at the beginning and the end of the day, looks for purpose, looks for a process by which that purpose can be fulfilled, and, and the profitability, which is the objective and, and the purpose of our, of our existence. And if we fulfill that, then we feel that our purpose as human beings is most deeply fulfilled. Alan spoke so beautifully about how her shift from mathematics, and I shared too with Ali and, and Woody the math background, I was a physics, and you can't do physics without knowledge of math, uh, a graduate from um, Columbia University. But uh, that was just, a, again, a, a stepping stone like both of you to, to, to other more interesting things. <clears throat> in, in honoring me tonight, you're really honoring yourselves. You're honoring yourselves for joining the fight against mistrust and misunderstanding. You're honoring yourselves for the courage to up uphold the values on which our great country was founded. The values of life, liberty, and our pursuit of happiness. And I thank all of you, from Walter Beebe, from Eileen Fisher, from David Darling, from my dear friend, uh, all of you here, uh, Jim Morton, who we've known for, it for looks like forever, uh, to, uh, to Al Palmutter and his wife, Joan, thank you so much. And all of you here, I thank you very much. And I thank Mayor Bloomberg, I thank all of you, all of the Americans who have supported us. I just came back from, from, uh, the, from delivering the presidential lecture in, in Jakarta, Indonesia, last Friday, invited by the president of Indonesia uh, to, uh, to deliver this lecture. And I can say that this story, the story of this project, of our center, has a, a, a riveted not only the detention of people in this country, but people all over the world. At the presidential level, at the highest level, down to the grassroots. And it is your support, your support for our movement, the political movement, which we are just launching, as a multinational, multi faith movement dedicated not to turning aside from the tough issues that lie at the interface between our faith communities, but by really identifying those tough issues and speaking to them and shedding light on them as a real, meaningful, practical way to not only build bridges between Jews, Christians, Hindus, Buddhists, but people of all goodwill from all cultures and faith traditions, including those who are seekers or may have no faith, or at this point, no, no commitment to a particular faith community. Our movement is intended to break the cycle of fear, the cycle of mistrust and misunderstanding, and the cycle of violence that threatens the peace and stability of the entire world. 
It is this misunderstanding. So when someone like Pastor Jones threatens to burn the Quran, I was told by the innocent president when I met with him, he was so afraid of it, he, that in his opinion, this could have been a, a, the, 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 the lighting point or the, the catalyst for, for World War III. This is how he described it. Uh, it is the, the real battlefront, ladies and gentlemen, is not between Islam and the West, or the United States and the Muslim world, or between Muslims and Jews, or Muslims and Christians. The real battlefront is between moderates of all the faith traditions and the, the, the extremists or the hardliners from all the faith traditions. And, and we here are part of this important coalition of moderates that we have called for, that the Prime Minister of Malaysia has called for in his UN, G, uh, UN uh, speech recently, which Hillary Clinton has supported, and which there's a, there's, a, there's a snowballing movement now on how to develop the particular uh, plays, for lack of a better word, for lack of a better word, on how we can, we can coalesce a growing coalition of moderates against the extremists in this country and all over the world. It is this downward spiral. This downward spiral of hatred and ignorance must be stopped and reversed if our children and their children are to live in a peaceful world. I'd like to end on a small story that my father told me, my late father, whom actually Jim Morton knows. The first time I met Jim Morton was I drove my late father to meet with uh, Jim Morton, Dean Jim Morton at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine. He told me that when he was a young boy, his father asked him, Muhammad, my son, can you imagine anyone loving someone else more than he loves himself? My father, being a little boy, didn't understand, didn't quite grasp the question, and he said, Muhammad, my son, I love you more than I love myself. It took years for my father to comprehend the significance of this statement, but most of us want for our children more than we want for ourselves. It's rare to find a parent who doesn't want his son or his daughter to go further than he or she wants himself. And I know that all of us here want more for our children and our grandchildren than we want for ourselves. And nothing could be better than bequeathing to them a more peaceful world, a safer world, a world free of weapons of mass destruction, a world free from the threats of global warming, a world free from violence committed in the name of religion. And that is the work that we are devoted and committed to, and it's the work that I know you all are committed to, and I look forward to working with you and with Walter Beebe, and each and every one of you, to doing our little bit to making the world a better place. Thank you very much.